Hello there, it's Josh here from Racing to Profit. I hope you can hear me. Uh, this is the second video of my festival review looking at days three and four. I will try desperately hard to make this a bit quicker than days one and two and I'll whiz through uh, the results from both days and just highlight a few horses and ob other observations that caught my eye. Um, so do watch with a notepad if you wish. Uh, there may be the odd horse to add um, to the notebook or the tracker uh, or some other things that may get you thinking uh, to help with your punting and uh, well enjoyment of horse racing moving forward. So with that said, we are on uh, Wednesday here, the 18th day, sorry, Thursday, I should say, the 18th, uh, day three of the festival where they obviously switched to the new course. Um, not much to say about the marsh, really. Um, I quite fancy Chatham Street Lad to pick up the pieces if Envoy Allen um, didn't run his race and I couldn't even get him in the top three, so that went well. Uh, I'm recording this on Monday, um, the 29th of March, and Chatham Street Lad uh, bolted up yesterday, stepped up to three miles at Limerick and Heavy, as you can see there. Um, I should say I'm in Gigi's, the excellent Gigi's gold. Uh, again, for this video and flicking through some of the results, this was the race card at the time. Um, Envoy LM was just a bit buzzy and wasn't himself over the first couple of fences, then obviously came down. Thankfully, he's OK. Uh, some interesting thoughts from others that he may be too buzzy and too keen and that might um, hold him back from turning into a gold cup horse of the future and whether or not he stays an intermediate trip uh, or Henry de Bomhead may try and make him into a kind of Queen Mother two mile horse. That'll be interesting, um, especially his next race. I assume he'll probably race at Punchestown. Um, but yeah, Chantry House ran well and won this, but there's not too much to say there. I suppose a rare British victory. Um, Asterian Falons jumped the best I've ever seen him. He was fairly straight and fairly accurate and Connections will be happy with that performance and we'll be hoping there's more to come there having struggled at times over fences with a few falls and a few erratic performances. So if they can keep his head right and keep him jumping off a mark of 150 odd, he should be able to do some damage somewhere. Maybe dropped back into handicap company, you never know uh, if they've sorted him out. So that's the marsh. I'm not going to dwell on that particular race for too long. Uh, we then went to the Potemps Network final handicap hurdle where another Irish horse dotted up. Not impossible to find. Um, Mrs Milner is just an interesting example I suppose of that type of horse to look at. Uh, lightly raced, unexposed. At the time she was one from seven, six places in handicap so it had been consistent. Things to note again obviously the ground was drying out um, but her only career win or two of her, well, two of her wins uh, in a maiden hurdle here had yielding uh, in the going. Again, big field form, even, even at kind of maiden hurdle level, used to the hustle and bustle, used to a strong pace. Um, and again, this is one of those reasons, I think, and examples of why some of the Irish handicappers uh, do particularly well at Cheltenham and have done in recent years is to a point, I think, they're hardier. I think they're used to bigger fields from early on in their careers. They're used to uh, going a kind of decent pace, settling off it, having plenty left at the end. They're used to the hustle and bustle, as are the jockeys maybe, more used to such things also. Um, and yeah, so big field maiden hurdle form there. Her only career win, uh, handicap win at the time was at Galway on good. Um, so some indication that... Uh, you know, the ground was going to be fine. And then stepping up in trip onto softer ground, she had course experience. Uh, this 10-runner race, which maybe I underestimated a bit at the time, where she chased home on the blind side and, you know, uh, yeah, three miles soft, bit of a break, stayed on really well. Another day, maybe a bit of a stronger pace, she'd have won that. Um, but, you know, that was off 130. On the blind side, had then run pretty well. Um, you know, this is all about, I suppose, this is an example of hot form and trying to get an idea and a picture of what the horse has achieved and whether they can go and achieve more. You know, Golan Fortune, uh, you know, in terms of British hurdle, handicap hurdle form, this was solid, even though it was, well, still 10 runners. But Golan Fortune had won again on the blind side, was kind of one from four 
uh, four places and you can see those races here he then came second again in another half decent handicap hurdle second to McFabulous in a grade two he then won a uh, class two conditions hurdle at Market Raisin uh, third again at Haydock so you know at the time that was no bad thing being beaten uh, by on the blind side there and it's probably kind of British hurdle handicap hurdle form when that was kind of up there as some of the best arguably up to this point in the season um <clears throat> As always, if you don't use racing post ratings in your analysis, I kind of three years ago, I didn't. Um, I do a lot more now just to kind of give some context to the mark the horse is running off and how they've performed and whether whether or not there may be more to come. That's useful if the horse has run well. It's useful if the horse has been beaten. Um, you know, a third, six and a half length, third there off one, two, two, but an RPR of one, three, two, um, giving some kind of feel to the level of performance uh, and the consistency i suppose so you know if you don't use those and trying to look if a horse is progressive especially you know younger lightly raced if this number keeps increasing run after run um so yeah so we had that so you know clever bit of training by paul nolan some indication this was the plan all along i suppose um she then ran well in um leopardstown race where you know, some of her better form had been being ridden patiently and coming from further back. They gunned her pretty hard near the front on this day in the qualifier, which is quite clever. Um, you know, that's probably, that's that's a way a horse, um, connections could handicap a horse. You know, she'd still run her race, but you could argue if she was buried out further back, she likes coming through horses staying on. She may well have got a bit closer, but of course that may well have meant her mark was a bit harder, one three four, although that didn't matter on this day. Um, but they rode, rode her more aggressively there. Maybe they did that just to doubly make sure she finished in the top six, because I think that was the qualifier at Leopardstown. Um, they then dropped her back in trip. Again, want to get another run in her. That would probably ensure uh, that she... You know, the mark wouldn't go up too much because it's highly likely, well, the ground was probably too deep and should have been outpaced and maybe would have been running on into fourth or fifth or maybe a bit further back. As it happened, um, she fell at the fifth, uh, which wasn't ideal. Um, and then rocked up at Cheltenham, stepping back up to 24 furlongs, decent ground, course form, still unexposed, hints that there was probably more to come. This was probably the plan. Um, another mare. Another mare kind of in form, the Irish team. So, yeah, lots of boxes ticked there. And I know plenty of people uh, got stuck into Mrs. Milner. Um, I can't say I was one of them, which is uh, annoying. <laughs> um, probably one of the easier handicap finds of the week. But then I'm saying that with hindsight, but plenty of things uh, to take away there. And good to see Brian Cooper uh, get another festival win on the board. Um, He's been in the dull drums for a bit by his own admission. Possibly his head wasn't fully focused on the game, but he's built up a good relationship with Paul Nolan, who obviously has a handful of decent horses and knows the time of day. Willie Mullins is using him a bit more also. Um, you know, he's a classy rider when his head's on it. So if you like playing in Ireland, um, you know, his rides are always worth a look. And depending on who rode them before he jumps on, uh, in mo many cases would be a big well would be an upgrade for me i think um you know I, I like him i think he's decent um he has had a wobble he's had periods of you know he's had a few injuries and a fair few falls but he seems to be over that and i quite like him as a jockey maybe that's from memories of him doing good turns for me on big price winners at a festival in the past but in any case uh certainly into punches town and moving forward he might be one to to keep an eye on um as are the Nolan Yard. Uh, what do I want to say? I had an each way poke six places on. Asked Dylan, who flashed, well, flashed home. He stayed on well into sixth. Um, he was probably ridden a bit too patiently as the race as it happened. So I don't think there was the strongest pace on here. Um, he ran again as if he probably needs four miles. Uh, you know, I think there's some damage from 144, but maybe not over hurdles. He was staying on and doing all his best work late and another half furlong. He'd have probably been into a clear second. Um, so he's one to keep in mind. He's lightly raced over fences. I'd be shocked if they didn't go chasing again. Um, and if he can sort, well, that, 
that fall wasn't too bad, but if he, well, the error wasn't too bad, I should say. Um, but yeah, if, that, if he can get his jumping boots on, he is definitely one to watch over fences into next season. And in theory, could develop into a half decent, smart, staying chaser. Uh, certainly over, well, further than three miles. Looks like he just keep galloping forever, three and a half miles plus. Uh, so hopefully, Fergal can sort that out. He's obviously eight. Um, it's quite late in the day to go chasing again, but uh, I should think they'll try, um, and he could pick up something half decent in the staying chase division, possibly handicap-wise, um, if he sorts his jumping out uh, and shows application for the job. I don't think there was much else in this that I wanted to highlight moving forwards necessarily. Come on, Teddy ran another decent race. He's another that could shape into a decent chaser. Um, not much else there. It wasn't possibly the strongest of races, and it may not work out too well. We shall see. Um, but that's that. There's a few thoughts there. Um, nothing much here. Alaho was impressive again. Um, quite a performance, and I think Willie might try and make him into a two-miler. I think they'll experiment anyway. Um, but that was decent. Kalashnikov ran a fine race, I thought, for Amy Murphy. Uh, she seems to have got him back after his problems of last season and a bit before where he was a bleeder. Um, well, a couple of times. Uh, he now lives out permanently in a field with a shed in the middle of the yard uh, seems to enjoy life and that kind of approach to training um, and it seems to have kept him sound but he was flat out from fairly early on here uh, and it was to his credit that he kept going I think on that evidence two and a half miles clearly is on the short side uh, and maybe a flat three miles I'm not quite sure what the plan is I think they're going to run him somewhere at Aintree um, but with any luck if he keeps running as he is they'll pick up something with him uh, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, not much to say from there really. Tornado Flyer picked up the pieces a bit uh, and stayed on from the back. He's only eight and he, you know, he's running some deep races. Um, and maybe Mullins will find a kind of small field, half decent conditions race for him. We shall see. Um, not much on that as I flick fly past 12 minutes. Uh, the staying hurdle. Um, not much to say here. I was kind of on each way. Liz Nagar Oscar, ugh, painful. Um, he was tanking uh, in behind, and I have no doubt in my mind he and Flooring Porter would have done battle, I think, over the last couple. But you have to jump, and Harry Skelton uh, didn't have the best of weeks in the saddle for me, but um, that's just how it goes. I think Connections jocked off Sean Bowen, which was a bit harsh. Um, but there we go. Uh, he looks like that wind op has done the trick. And I thought that was a decent run at Haydock, given how hard he went on the front end. Um, he hasn't done, he hasn't finished winning yet over hurdles. Uh, and they'll have some fun with him and maybe plot out a similar route next season. But he'll pick up a race or two, uh, given how he was traveling there. And the wind op does seem to have done the job. Um, Flooring Porter is possibly an example. Uh, of how a change in tactics and working out a horse can just transform them um and it's not until they've uh well started to make all on him you know it was a pretty decent handicapper but they started they dictated here at navin you know he made the boss's oscar look like a selling plate and as we just saw he ran a decent second off a mark in the 150s in the per temps um but yeah, making all, um, I think I tipped him, backed him at 16s at Leopardstown on this day, but failed to keep the faith at Cheltenham all for me. Um, but yeah, that's just an example of changing tactics, making all dictating, and how that can transform a horse, and how once they get on a roll, how some of these young horses can just, uh, you know, grow in confidence and stature, and just keep going. Um, it was also another credit to Gavin Cromwell, who had... A fantastic week from a small team. Um, I'm not quite sure whether he's underestimated still or not, but obviously in the Irish ranks, you know, your eyes would get drawn to Mullins, Elliot, Henry de Bromhead, Jesse Harrington, Noel Mead to an extent. Uh, but Gavin Cromwell, if he has the ammunition, can clearly do the job, uh, and that's a yard to keep an eye on, especially if they continue to get some decent ammunition. Obviously, won a champion hurdle a couple of years ago. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, that's a yard to keep an eye on also, uh, especially at the top level. And never to be 
be put off and maybe the market still underestimates his abilities um paddy power plate handicap chase do i want to say much from this uh i mean yeah the shunter was <laughs> chucked in again um and that wasn't in much doubt from an early stage really i thought he had quite a hard race at kelso but clearly bounced out of that no problem at all so um some credit i suppose to uh his how he's been campaigned uh in recent starts of course um i forget when it was it was a few starts ago where he got done um for not being ridden to the best of his abilities in one of these maiden hurdles but i won't um dwell on that for too long but you know yeah in terms of this season and how he's been campaigned in handicaps um fair play to them you can see there ran off 147 pound claim posted in career best 154 rpr so he was clearly absolutely lobbed in um and yeah jumped well on the whole uh who do i want to mention far class ran another cracking race um i thought he didn't quite see the trip out of leopardstown here I fancied him on his next start here where I think it had gone a lot closer, but for absolutely walking past or walking through uh, the second from home there. Um, and that just told after the last where he faded a bit. Um, he was mashed up on the turn for home in this race, uh, which I suspect he would have got level and made the shunter have to pull out a bit more given how he ran and finished. I suspect he would have done. But again, 146, an RPR career best, I think. Yeah, career best. Uh, well, certainly on recent efforts, hands over fence of 155. Um, he deserves something. He jumped really well, actually, I thought. Um, and, you know, a repeat of that run or a repeat of recent efforts in these deep handicap chases, which have worked out well, producing plenty of winners. This race here, maybe this is a race to note, uh, depending on who hasn't run. Um, but yeah, off you go won that, um, and it's turning into a deep race. Manella Times hasn't run since. Live, laugh, live, love, laugh. Age 11 ran a well again and placed in a decent race. Far class there. Skolmir won, um, or however you pronounce his name. Uh, and I backed in that. They won, um, on his next start, a decent handicap. Gooseman has won again also and some further horses down here have won um so that's a decent race and uh one to keep an eye on possibly but i think far class um you know even the likes have crossed my mind off one three four arthur moore may find something for him uh, because this was clearly a deep handicap chase um and another example of those deep handicap chases which are deeper and more competitive than plenty for the fair that happens on this side of the Irish Sea and another reason why some of these horses turn up and bolt in again I think but yeah far classes he's got something in him over fences in the handicap off this mark I don't think there's much else I want to say I thought the unit was worth a little nibble at a monster price um hasn't really well actually he's jumped and traveled well um I think that probably confirmed he wants a flat track. He is only one three four. It was a bit of a, you know, he's had an injury and came back. I thought there was some promise in this Warwick run, and actually the horse there, Espar de Te, for Tom George, followed up over the weekend. Um, so that's some okay form. Uh, he caught the eye when he returned after his injury at Weatherby, where he cruised around. So maybe kind of eighteen to twenty furlongs, decent ground, flatter track. And in a kind of having his sights lowered a bit, because this was a fairly deep race, I suppose. Um, but I think Alan King, if he can keep sound, will find a handicap chase with him, given on how he's jumped and travelled through a few races. So that might be one to take forward also. What do I want to say about the Mayor's race? Um, I suppose the Bromhead, if you backed her, well done. At the time going into this, this Mayor's Novice wasn't really a race I had an interest of in playing and it didn't really look properly. Maybe I should have done, because of course, her form behind heaven help us who then bolted up in a handicap earlier in the week at cheltenham that was franked and she received a wonderful ride and dotted up fairly well here um so that was decent i do want to ma mention magic days i think she's probably the one to take forward whether or not she's underestimated in the market moving forwards who knows clearly very lightly raced for her age but she 
I don't know how she stayed in second here. If you watch that back, she has pulled Robbie Power's arms out for the whole race. Never settled. Reefed, pulled, must have used untold amounts of energy and yet still had enough left to keep on pitching and to kind of plug on after the second after the last whether or not that says something about the depth and quality of this race on the day maybe it does but if magic days can learn to settle maybe they'll try holding her up and being more patient but she's clearly got some ability um, and maybe could do some damage in a mare's handicap or a normal handicap so magic days is interesting because um, she was beaten by the right horse i think given some of her form uh, and how, like I said, with the heaven help us form line, I suppose. Um, but yeah, given how she raced and how keen, um, you know, she learned to drop her head and settle. She's clearly a smart animal and going to do some damage. Um, she ran away with Robbie a bit there. Anything about the Kim Yu? What do I want to say about this? Just incredible performance from Mount Ida, really. Um, no shock she was lobbed in. I thought, I mean... I think she was eight or nines the kind of couple of days before, and then the money really came on the day. Pummeled into three to one favourite, possibly five and a half in the morning. I thought in a big field, um, you know, left handed, big step up in trip, that may be worth taking on at that price, which for the first half of the race looked very wise. Um, in the second half, not so much. Quite an incredible ride and performance, but again, this is the way to win a Cheltenham handicap, really. You've got a horse who has shown ability, um, clearly, and been running on her merits, I think, um, in some fairly deep, well, mares races. But um, again, what you've got here is running their race in deep ground, um, pretty hard to weigh up true ability, uh, but then takes a massive step up in trip, decent ground, strong pace, and that has transformed her again. So she's been running well in these conditions. Um, but then these different conditions again uh, have absolutely transformed. And she was bred um, plenty of her breeding and other point that suggested she may relish this trip. And it's the MO clearly now of the Elliot Yard. They did it with Milan Native, a similar profile in the Kim Muir. I should think they'll be desperately harding to uh, desperately trying to find another one to do this with. So maybe if they've you know, next year when they have something entered that's been running over short but running well, maybe in deep ground, or maybe not running well because they don't handle deep ground, or have needed further um, kind of getting onto that type earlier before the money steams in, maybe the one for the future notebook in that sense. But yeah, an incredible performance. I like Storm Control each way. I thought he was overpriced and thankfully clung on for fifth. For some sort of return there wasn't much else to take from this cloudy glen ran well he blows hot and cold but that was a performance which again suggested 140 is workable a 147 rpr career best uh, on this occasion he settled big field uh ran on well um you know he yeah he's in and out but Phoenicia will win something again with him next season and as with ever any trevor hemmings horse you know he got rid of two thirds of his string did he um when covid struck for various different reasons so any horse that trevor hemmings has kept especially youngsters also um is always worth noting because you know he's shrewd his racing manager and team are shrewd his team of trainers know what they're doing so any horses he's kept uh they clearly think have ability and have kind of more wins in them um yeah, not much else to say from this race at the time. I suppose Milanford, uh, he was pulled up, maybe found this all a bit too much, but he's unexposed for all his races, haven't worked out well. Um, but Nick Mitchell's got a few nice staying chases on his hands and maybe another summer at grass. This one will do something into next season. He looks a big strapping, staying, chasing sort. Um, yeah, that's that race. Nothing, I, nothing more I want to say. I don't think on that that I haven't already said. Um, yeah, no, I, I still think Storm Patrol maybe next season again, sight slowered maybe. Um, it clearly does well at the course, maybe smaller fields likes to dominate. Um, he'll make all again at some point, I think over three miles to three miles to possibly smaller field. Um, and yes, no, that's all I'll say on that. So let's move on to the final day. Um, 
there's nothing about the triumph <laughs> I really want to say. Um, we moved on to the county hurdle uh, where um, Belfast banter um, hacked up. He's been a bit of a, a monkey before, but um, possibly no shock in what wasn't maybe the strongest renewal. And again, some focus here just to kind of get this profile drilled into our heads for festival handicap hurdles. Uh, you know, you keep repeating it, you keep looking at these kind of profiles and reflecting in this way. Over time, uh, you will land on some decent priced festival, uh, and that's probably, you know, relevant to lots of festivals, Cheltenham, Aintree, Punchestown, Galway, big field handicap hurdles, at strong pace, etc. This was only this horse's second ever run in a handicap hurdle. Um, so, you know, you can assume from that point uh, that there was probably going to be more to come at some point um, as a general kind of assumption. Again, we had, uh, he started life with Dan Skelton, but some of his better form was on decent ground. Uh, so again, some, you know, another one of these Irish horses who's had form on decent ground and then, and then has to run and get stuck in the mud quite a few times. Um, he'd been fairly heavily raced this season, uh, so some credit to connections in the horse's constitution. But again, big field form, used to the hustle and bustle, strong pace. Um, and uh, yeah, if you watch this back, and I remember watching at the time thinking that was interesting, um, didn't really act on it come this race, but that Ascot run, and what was a decent handicap hurdle for kind of UK standards. Watch that back if you want and just see how he cruised into it from kind of two, three out. I think some, maybe me, you know, he has won races uh, only just, but he's also travelled like the winner and then not found much off the bridle. Um, clearly needed delivering as late as possible. Um, but at this Ascot race, maybe it was the heavy ground he got stuck in, but just watch that back if you want how he moved and where he came from and how the jockey was motionless i suppose was some indication that a mark of 129 may be very workable one day because you don't move through races like that unless you've got a fair you know some talent and unless you've got something in hand it was then just a question of when they could find the key small field races deep ground here you know again another small field grade 2 hurdle not the first Irish horse to be running in those races and then stepping out of those again into a big field handicap. It's a way of keeping them ticking over um, without, you know, but potentially being outclassed or out sprinted in a slowly run race or in ground or a trip they may not or a track they may not have found ideal, ensuring the mark doesn't get chucked up too high um, while still kind of running on your merits to a point uh, and then. Yeah, decent ground, big field, uh, has actually won fairly comfortably come the end, but he had the perfect race set up, was able to kind of creep into it, deliver late, decent ride and fair play to the horse. He has found a fair bit. I was on milk with each way at 20, 28, a bit of agony. I think Robbie Dunn, if he looks back and had his time again, would probably sit for a bit longer. I think he got after him. He has one burst. And I think he's got after him just a half a furlong too early. If he could have sat as they kind of turned for home, um, but maybe he thought he couldn't. I think you run this race three or four more times and you probably get a different result. Petty Mouchoir may be hanging on. Milkwood delaying his charge a bit more. Eclair de Buffou could, could, could maybe have gone... Uh, and one as as well. Um, the one I will take third time lucky won't have gone under the radar. Um, he ran a bit, ran away a bit with Harry Skelton, who seemed unable to keep hold of him. Um, he was too keen. Uh, if he'd have been able to settle, and if he was ridden out the back a bit longer, maybe Harry felt he couldn't keep hold of him. He saw daylight a bit on the outside and took off with him a bit. Um, this was some evidence that one four three. I think that confirmed, given how he travelled through this, uh, that one four three probably underestimates him. And in a way, he'd probably been campaigned a bit like the Irish handicap hurdles, you know, some big field form here, then into a small field graded race for a horse who can pull and needs to settle and probably needs a bit to drop right. Um, and 
yeah, kind of the handicap or underestimating him maybe. He's got, I don't know if he'll turn up at Aintree or Air, um, but he does have a big field handicap hurdle in him. Maybe he won't be missed. Uh, maybe they could think about aiming at next year's Betfair, uh, but they'll probably want to get some wins on the board before then. Um, but yeah, as kind of well handicapped British handicap hurdlers go, I think he's got, you know, five, six, seven pounds to play with possibly. As does Milkwood, maybe back on the flat of track, he probably won't be missed next time either. He is seven, but he does he has he will win a handicap hurdle somewhere. Again, his form's too good, he travels and jumps too well uh, in terms of British form. Um so yeah, he'll win more races, as will third time. Lucky, maybe they're the two to take forks. I still think they've got some room for manoeuvring their mark. It's just, you know, in that type of race when it drops right. Um a winner, God, I had a 20 to 1 winner, thankfully to ensure the week was uh, solid if unspectacular for the blog. Uh, Vanillier um, making all pretty much and absolutely destroying uh, what might turn out to be a mediocre race. This, you know, the Abbott Bartlett can work out well to a certain level, maybe not world beaters, but even the horses that tailed off or finished down down the pecking order, uh, you know, some of these are on marks you would think are going to prove very workable as they move into handicaps next season, as they mature. Some will go over fences, some will no doubt stay over timber. Vanilla looks a smart horse. Uh, a 153, I'm not quite sure how it compared with times and some of the other races, um, kind of on the new course over the two days and similar trips, etc. Um, I'm sure someone somewhere would have done such analysis. Um, but yeah, it was decent and he hit the line hard and they think he'll go chasing and he could be an interesting one in all the staying chases next season. I should think connections will be very excited. So fingers crossed he jumps well and takes to chasing. Oscar uh, uh, Elite, the Tizards will be delighted with that. Again, you would think chasing will be the future for him given connections. Um, I did have a poke on another who hit some of my stats point. There's the Ollie Murphy horse who went off at 150 odd, 180 on the machine. Um, I was very excited through this. He, he cruised around out the back um, and moved like a half decent horse who the ground was fine. Maybe he didn't put on, but put down in the latter stages uh, or he just didn't get home actually. Maybe he just didn't stay. Uh, so maybe he's, he's one to actually drop back and trip. Um, but he moved like a horse who is going to do some damage off one, two, six. And you can see that's an example. Seventh beaten seven and a half lengths. Not really going anywhere after the last, um, but still a career best RPR. One, two, six, there, one, three, six. So he's gonna, they'll, Ollie Murphy will do something with him moving into next season. I think, um, having said we'll try and keep this short, I've rattled past half an hour, uh, but hopefully, um, as always, I'm trying to say something of interest, not much to say about the Gold Cup really. Um, I'm not sure I can add any insight into that. I suppose it was great to see Manella Rindo back. He arguably had the best course form, and Albert Bart, the winner, uh, second to champ in the RSA last year uh, and if it had not got racing so soon he probably would have won that that year um, an incredible performance and if they can keep this up he's gonna it's just a bull you know 179 RPR uh, he is just going to keep dining at the top table and he probably won't they'll try and keep him in a Plutard apart until next year's Gold Cup I think that proved he stayed um, he jumped well maybe a bit too gassy at times um, will he ever get past Manella Rindo if running the same race at Cheltenham? Uh, that's debatable because I think Manella Rindo was idling come the line there and probably had a fair bit left. I mean, hard not, me not to mention Native River on ground that went. Um, he was flat out from the start and he's clearly retains plenty of ability. You know, he did 177 uh, when winning at Sandown and fair play to him. I should think they'll keep him in training and he'll pick up something else next year. Uh, but clearly he's not at Gold Cup level anymore. Um, even if it was a bog, maybe, obviously it'd have been a bit closer. I'm not going to mention the Fox Hunters. That's not my bag at all. Um, Paddy Powers, Mayor Chase. Obviously I had an interest with the kind of nostril that I own in really super. That didn't really go to plan, which was disappointing. Um she jumped off all right there. Her jumping was a bit scrappy. 
uh, the times and the ground suggested it actually wasn't that good to soft. Um, maybe a bit tacky. They'd had a little bit of rain in the morning. Jack didn't just thought she wasn't enjoying herself. Uh, she obviously had plenty to find on the figures, um, but she was beaten long before that kind of lack of class in the context of this race came to the fore. He didn't think she particularly enjoyed the undulations and the track, and for whatever reason, uh, was never really um, going yard. She came into it in fine form at home, um, but maybe it is a case that she is best on proper decent ground, uh, a flatter track, um and yeah no cambers and ups and downs etc but um you know she's won seven times for us and she will win some more once we find conditions but with any luck fingers crossed we'll have some fun with her over the summer uh, and she will pop up again in the weeks to come um what do i want to say about the martin pipe anything i want to touch on here um da -da -da, let me just think um, let me have a look at the results, check my notes. Um, oh, yes, I mean, the top three, I mean, this race can work out quite well as well um, over time. Now, this is the sort of horse, where are we? I mean, he's top right here off one, four, three. Um, I mean, he shapes to me like he wanted a lot further here. Um, he just flew home. Uh, it got a bit outpaced through the race towards the rear, was left with an awful lot to do, not necessarily through any fault of the jockey, maybe he was just outpaced. Um, but he's the sort that connections, if they so wanted, it's the sort you would probably work back from a kind of per temps qualifier if you wanted, although that's a year away, and work back and try and get him rocking up to a mark that's not too dissimilar from this. We shall see on, my, on this evidence, three miles is going to be no problem. He ran here as if uh, this mark underestimates him. So we shall see how that develops. But one for three miles and a lightly race one from Joseph O'Brien's yard. Uh, he tried chasing. That didn't seem to work out too well. Um, all kind of ground seemed to come to him. So he might be one to take forwards. Uh, the Mullins horse, um, again, lightly raced, uh, you know, hard to weigh up he run in a grade one novice hurdle you know appreciates rate appreciate its race there who obviously won the supreme um you know hidden his ability uh came into this off one four two and was clearly chucked in um and you know that type of profile um is one to note i think he drifted a bit in the morning uh gabby Nacco is clearly similar profile he unseated rider fairly early on or was brought down through no fault of his own he is clearly chucked in as well i think i get the impression over 20 furlongs given this grade one form here obviously behind bob ollinger uh, and some grade two novice hurdle form here i suspect he's got a fair bit in hand whether or not he's missed in the kind of coming weeks we shall see i suspect he'll rock up at punchestown or galway or a decent handicap hurdle but he's clearly got ability also um i don't think there was much to take from the british side i suppose any uh, british horse who can get in and around these irish well handicapped horses is worth keeping an eye on so maybe the pauling horse pipes and hendersons although nine and nine so maybe seven maybe pauling's horse with a bit more upside potential decent effort there um i'm ticking around the 38 minutes i think that's been going on long enough um one more thing i will say hold on i will finish for those of you who like uh, stats and different things just looking at um jeremy as a stallion i believe he's passed away hasn't he which is a great shame I, i'm not quite i assume he's probably still got a fair amount of horses coming through although i'm not quite sure um he's had 207 run to date in 2021 you can see the kind of win percentage solid there um he's a sire to keep an eye on and to know and if i just look at his festival record um he at cheltenham here um just to keep an eye on really uh there were some hints over the last couple of seasons given the numbers shot up so six runners then 11 and the placed efforts that maybe he might burst into life this season and one of my readers on the blog flagged him at the start of the the week and said keep an eye on and, and posted his qualifiers on the day um and you know that wouldn't have been a bad micro angle to just follow <laughs> four from 11 six places plus 45 at betfair sp we can see some of the winners here 
appreciate it who clearly had form from the champion bumper the year before black tears who'd run the year before Sir Gerhard winning the bumper uh belfast banter um and you know a few in the top five also the glancing queen top six birchdale uh, happy go lucky um so into next season Cheltenham Festival, Jeremy may be one to watch, and maybe just generally if you like your breeding and your sires, especially over jumps, uh, take a look at Jeremy. Might not be a bad starting place if you've got horse race base or other system bi system building software to dive in and see if you can find an angle or two, which is might be something I could try doing myself. But with that said, um, as always with the ambition of trying to keep this video short, about 40 minutes is what it is. There was quite a lot to flick through there over to the last two days of Cheltenham. Hopefully I have said something, uh, like I said, of, of use to your punting uh, moving forward, whether it's eye catchers, horses to keep an eye on, or the types of profiles or thinking or analysis that can help us land uh, moving forward, help us land on more of these kind of decent winners of similar types of races uh, moving forward into the future. Um, so with that said, thanks for watching. Uh, do click like on the video on YouTube if you liked it. Any questions, comments, things I could do better, uh, always welcome and appreciated. But with that said, uh, this is Josh saying thanks for watching and until the next time, bye for now.